Hey guys, this is Subhasis. Today we will talk about REST Assured API Automation. We will study what is REST Assured. We will test get post put delete APIs using REST Assured. We will see how to create and send a request payload. We will validate both status code and response. We will see few interview questions. Please uh, like, subscribe and share my channel if you really like it. So uh, first thing is what is REST Assured? It is one of the most popular Java based library which is highly used in API test automation. It helps in writing powerful and maintainable tests for RESTful APIs. You can go through this website restassured.io. We will go through this website and I will explain you what are the things important for you. Before starting API automation, there are few preconditions. You should understand those things. You should have basic knowledge of API testing using Postman. You can refer to my previous videos, part one and part two. You should have basic knowledge of Kojava then maven and test engine here is the website uh, request response dot in which i have explained in my uh, previous videos how to make a get call how to make a post call how to make a put and delete call so let's see that first before starting api automation what these calls are doing let me go through the postman so in postman Let's understand one get call. So what we, you are doing here? First thing is you have to find out what is the method. So here you are using get. So you have like post put patch delete. So here you are using get method. What is this? This is your URL. You have a query parameters. You have some authorization you have some header you need body in case of post method and once you set all these things when you send it you get a status code and you validate these response is correct or not this is what you do when you perform manual testing so same thing we will try to do from API. So let's start with the automation things. Let me create a Maven project. I'm giving the project name as API Automation Rest Assured. So your Maven project is ready. We'll write all our tests inside the test package. Before doing this, let me explain you. I have told you, you have to go through this Rest Assured dot io website so what are the things you need here let's here is the document click here getting started first thing you have to add the maven dependency copy this and add it add to your dependency open the pom file pom.xml you can see the by default dependency JUnit dependency is added here. So now we have added REST Assured dependency. Save it. Build your project. Or you can do a Maven update project. Make a post update. Okay. let it 
get updated let's create our fast class we are doing we are going to do get api that's the class name is get api click on this we need a main method to execute okay so before starting the code i want you to understand few more things so let me tell you you have to understand few methods that is given when then given method helps you setting a background you pass query parameter authorization header body all these things you need to pass before you are making a get call though all these things are not mandatory still you can pass whatever you need then when when method marks the premise of your scenario for example which method you are going to use like get post put delete you can set then then is like after given and when what you need to do you have to validate the status code you have to validate the response so you need to do all these validations after this then method so before we write uh, we need to import we need to do a static import of rest assure let's go through the again rest assure website you can search for a static import copy this paste it here you can write import static let me do the copy paste for all so so let's uh, write code for our first get api that lists all users this is the url right given method when you click on dot all these methods you will see so you need to pass the query parameter we pass the query parameter there right so it's a string arguments two string arguments you need to pass so what are the query parameters here you can see page and two so let's pass page and two then what we need to pass then we need to pass the authorization dot auth this is the method authorization method double click dot you can see different methods here now you select none why i'll tell you because here you saw all the methods of authorization right but we have used no auth if you are using any anything else you can select those for example basic auth if you are selecting then you have to pass the username and password here but we are using no auth that's why we are giving no auth that's why we are giving none now we will pass a header dot header here you have to pass two strings as arguments it's a key value pair so pass content type and then value as application slash json if you want to pass uh, content type you can pass something like this content type then you can write content type dot json you can pass like this also now
now you need to use when method so all these three conditions you have given uh, given param then authorization header content type now when method where we'll set what is the type we are using get get of what is the url url here is this so we have passed the url now dot then what we'll do here we'll validate the status code and response dot status code what is the status code here 200 where you can see here 200 okay now you need to validate you need to validate the body what is the body page first thing is you have to validate page is true or not okay page then what we can do we can write equal to page is equal to two so we have written this test case that's executed i'll just put a sys out fast api test case executed successfully let's execute yes so uh, it's getting executed but you don't know what is happening in between right so you want to validate whether whatever you are doing that is happening so let's see here what we are doing is status code we are validating as 200 so let's put 400 for example we are expecting 400 and what actually is coming it is comparing or not let's execute now run as demo application see here it failed why it failed because expected status code was 400 we are expecting 400 but actually is 200 which you are seeing here so there is a mismatch of actual and expected that's why it is failing clear now you need to validate body response page is coming as two or not okay so actual is coming to for example let's give here three so it should fail run as now you can see actual is two expected is three that's why it is failing similarly you can validate the next one for page six how do you validate copy this add it here and add, just copy this parameter what is the value six so if you give six here Let me run it. So it's getting executed. So what we did, however, I have told first you use the given method. Then what you did, you use the parameter, query parameter, content type. Sorry, uh, query, uh, you use the query parameter that is page and value as two. Then what you did, you used the authorization here authorization is no auth that is none then you used header header is content type and application json you can use the content type also you can use one of either one of uh, this thing then you used 
SQL method. Then you used gate, gate of this URL, whatever URL we are trying to fetch. You use then method. You validated the status code. You validated the body. Similarly, you can validate all these fields. I'll explain how you will validate all these things also. These are a bit complicated things. Now you want to see what is the response. Can I capture the response? I want to see what is the response is coming here. We can print it here. Let me show you that. How to do that. So let's print the response. Let's copy this. Uh, for now, I'll comment it and let me paste it here. So what we'll do is we'll store it in uh, response equal to. So we'll tell it as get response. A return type is response here. And now you don't have to pass all these things. Okay, so your response is stored here. How you will print it is you can use pretty print method. So it will print your response in your console. Let's see. You can see this right your response is printed whatever response we are getting here same thing you can see here so you can just print something like this also sys out so what we need to do is so we'll write a response is dot add string let me print it let me comment this so you can see it clearly what is happening see here so your response is visible here if you want to see the status code what you need to do again you can print something like this so get response dot here you can print the status code method if you want to see what is the time taken response time you can store something like this you can print something like this so get time you can use get time method Let's see. So see here, you can see the status code is 200. The response time is in millisecond. What is the total time taken for this get response? Thank you. Please like, share and subscribe my channel.